I remember raising up and the doll looked like it was moving. And in my mind, there was no doubt that doll moved. To this day, I will swear to you, that doll moved. Hey guys, for those of you who have been around either one of my channels for a while, welcome back. For those of you who might be new, I'm Mandy Collins Moore and welcome. I look forward to getting to know you guys. Okay guys, um, forgive this. <laughs> I didn't feel like straightening it today so I just tried to tame the curls and yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, it's time to get back into a little something spooky. Let's get back into some down-home ghost. Now, this episode, I'm going to tell you guys a story that's very personal to me. Because it's my ghost story. When I was a kid, we lived in a, um, a house, an older model house trailer for a while and of course you know my parents were just getting started they were building up building up their credit saving up funds and finally I think I was four four or five they had everything set to buy a house they bought this cute little three-bedroom brick house little way out of town out in the country with a few acres they were thrilled so was i you know i finally got to have this nice big bedroom it was awesome well that house had some secrets and to this day i'm still not sure exactly what caused those secrets I realized something may be wrong with the house when I started hearing these strange little noises. And and the weird part about it is, is I didn't really take note of them, I guess you'd say, until I got a little bit older, on up like 10 or 11. Um, before then, I rem I had vague memories of hearing the sounds, but not really thinking much of it. Um, but when I got older, the noises became hard to ignore, I guess you would say. And the closet in my bedroom became a source of terror. Which was strange because I remember as a child you know of course 10 was still a child but i remember when i was much smaller actually liking to play in my closet it was you know i called it my clubhouse but it got to where i was terrified of the closet I had no idea why just looking at it i can remember made me feel sick i used to love being in my bedroom playing by myself or even then, I was writing. I had notebooks I would write my stories in. And I loved being in there. And then it got to where I did not want to be in that room. One of the first things I can remember, and you've got to keep in mind, a lot of this is just pieced together because I was so young. It's hard to remember a lot of it. At least remember it, you know, very clearly. One of the first things I remember happening, I, I don't know, I'll have to see if I can find a picture of one and possibly see if I can put it with this video. If I can't, I apologize, but I will try. As some of you may remember back in like the 70s and early 80s, there were these dolls that were very popular. They sat on these um, almost like urns. And they would have all these tassels coming out of the top of their heads. And my mom had gotten me one. She, she was in a beautiful pink dress. And mom had painted the bedroom to match the doll. And I used to love that doll. 
And I remember waking up one morning. And you know how you get that feeling? Like somebody's watching you? I remember feeling that way. And the doll sat on my dresser, which, you know, here was my bed. Here was the wall. Well, here was the foot of my bed. And then here was the wall across from the foot of my bed. And the dresser sat on that wall. The doll was on that dresser. I remember raising up. And the doll looked like it was moving. And in my mind, there was no doubt that doll moved. To this day, I will swear to you, that doll moved. I remember bolting out of the bed, going screaming down the hall. And it was a Saturday, so it was like my parents one day to get to sleep in. And I'm running to their bedroom screaming, waking them up. They assured me it was just... You know, me coming out of sleep in my wild imagination, you know. I still did not like that doll. I wanted no part of that doll after that, but my mom was not about to get rid of it. She had spent good money on this doll, you know. And there was another incident. Not long afterward, I had a Bozo the Clown doll. I woke up in the middle of the night... And I usually slept with him on my bed. Him and a Grover doll that I had. You know, Grover from Sesame Street. Bozo was in the floor. But he was sitting straight up and just slowly turning. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. But about that time, my little brother poked his head in my bedroom. He had gotten up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and here was my room, here was his room. He had to go right past my bedroom door to get to the bathroom. He had just kind of glanced in, and he saw the doll rotating. And so he had poked his head in and just stared at this doll. And then he looked at me and he whispered, How are you making it do that? Well, I wasn't. That point, he bolted back to his room. And I got up, ran past the doll, and went to his room with him. And that's where I spent the night. Of course, our parents wrote it up to children's wild imaginations, being half asleep. The same things they had with the other doll. Well, I, I took Bozo and I put him in a toy chest. And then piled every book I had on top of that chest to make sure he wasn't coming back out. Okay? Well, a few months goes by and nothing really major happens again. Things seem to have calmed down other than I still just had this horrible feeling when I was in my room. One morning, I remember waking up. I had been awake probably 10-15 minutes. And, I, you know, I was just kind of hanging out in my room, chilling, debating whether I wanted to go eat breakfast or just get to writing because I remember I had this one story I was working on. And all of a sudden, I got that feeling again. You know, somebody is watching me. And I looked toward my bedroom door. And keep in mind, these are standard height bedroom doors. My mom was shorter than me, even then. And I'm only 5'4". My little brother was definitely shorter than me. The only person tall enough in the house to really reach their hand up to the top of that doorway would have been my dad. And he was at work. So I was really freaked out when I looked at my bedroom door and there was a hand coming around the inside of the door all the way at the very top. I remember sitting there in the floor just staring at this hand 
and then look into my bedroom window and debating whether or not I can make the jump out of it because there was quite a quite a way to the ground finally I decided okay it's got to be my brother maybe he's got a chair and he's standing on it you know so I creep toward the door I get there and the hand yanks back out of my sight I peep out the door there's nothing there no chair no brother nothing that point I decide breakfast with mama and little brother sounds real good I run to the kitchen and I tell my mom about it and again she's like you have the wildest imagination well okay I mean what else could I do and we had a cat named snowball he was my baby he used to love to sleep with me he got to where he would not go in my bedroom he wanted no part of it and one day I just decided you know you're gonna sleep with me tonight I miss you so I picked him up and I took him in my room as soon as I set him on the bed he looked at my closet door and started hissing and squalling and right back out of the bedroom he went now it really escalated not long before my parents sold the house I think I was around 12 then and in the middle of the night one night I hear my closet door now keep in mind these were two sliding closet doors and you know a lot of times those will get like a rattly rough sound to them when they open well I wasn't fully asleep it was that state where you're just kind of almost there but still aware enough to know everything that's going on around you I hear that door opening my first thought was okay maybe mama was doing laundry and she's come in to put some of my clothes in the closet I roll over my mom's not there but that door is opening I hear a woman's voice and it was really scratchy and gravelly and just terrifying to be honest call me a little bitch of all things and then I see that same hand that I had seen on my bedroom door coming out of my closet but this time it wasn't just the hand the woman herself came right behind it she oh god what's the best way to explain her she looked human okay she didn't look like a demon or anything like that but she was like disproportionate it was like somebody had stretched her almost like Gumby she was incredibly tall and her legs really long and her arms too and her hair was really thin but what was there was jet black and it looked really dirty like she hadn't washed it in a year or two and her eyes they were beautiful green but they were so bright they almost glowed and I will never forget her mouth it was bright red and formed into this twisted horrible grin I didn't know what to do the only thing I could do was try to make it out the bedroom door before she made it to my bed and that was exactly what I did I didn't want to go to my mom dad was at work I didn't want to go to mom just because I knew she would think it was just my overactive imagination again so I ran to my brother's room he decided he was gonna go in there you know he was trying to be the tough boy of the house you know protect his big sister 
he decided he was going to creep over into my room and see if he saw her. Just as he got to my bedroom door, she popped her head out at him. He bolted down the hall out the front door and was out in the yard before Mama could even blink. Mom was sitting in the living room watching TV. Meanwhile, I'm in his room, backed in a corner, terrified she's going to come in there. Well, Mama chases my brother out into the yard. He tells her what's going on. She comes back down the hall, charges in my room, flips on the light, and to her shock, she caught a glimpse of this thing as it was retreating back into my closet. She took me and my brother into the living room, told us we were sleeping in there for the night, and I remember waking up when my dad got home and her, hearing her tell my dad. My dad said, you let these kids fill your head full of stuff. Needless to say, me and my brother were both quite relieved when moving day came. Mama and Daddy had bought a bigger plot of land and actually had a house built. We had, they had sold that house. And back then there were no kind of, you know, a lot of, a lot of states now have laws where you have to disclose any kind of hauntings. Back then, there was no such thing. And like I said, Daddy didn't, you know, he thought we were all... <laughs> so, you know, we never said anything to the new owners. And the new owner was a single mom. And her son actually was a year younger than me. And transferred to my school when they moved into that house. Well, about a year after they moved in, I mean, he started asking me little things at school about the house. He was like, did you ever hear this or that? And, but he never came out and told me why he was asking these questions. And about a year later, he cornered me at school and he said, my mom needs to talk to your mom. Um, okay. He said, give her our number. Tell her we need to talk to her tonight. Okay. So I gave my mom the number. And I had also given him our number. Um, Mom told me, you know, I'll call him later. I need to get supper done. I need to get this done. You know, she always had too many things to do in the evenings after we got home from school. Well, we were just about to eat supper when the phone rang. Mama answered it. And it was the lady who had bought the house. She wanted to know why they hadn't warned her. Mama said, warn you about what? Her and her son proceed to describe things that they're seeing and hearing in the house to my mom. My mama tells me to go get on the other line because, you know, think about it. This was back when you still had, you know, landlines with cords and all that. She says, go get on the other line and listen. I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I had not really given him a lot of details, even when he questioned me on things, because I didn't want him to think I was crazy. But when he described the woman he saw come out of his bedroom closet and she was the exact same woman I had seen I didn't know what to do what to say how to process that only thing I can remember coming out of my mouth is which bedroom did you make yours it was my old bedroom They had done research on the house and on the area around the house. They had found out about a woman who had lived about three miles down the road. 
that had always felt that her family had been cheated out of that house somehow. They never managed to get the full story, but they had managed to find a picture of her. And she had died of cancer. That might possibly explain the thinning hair. But the picture, he brought it to school the next day for me to see personally and to take back and show my mom. It was the very woman that I had seen. She wasn't all stretched out and disproportionate, but the face, the hair, it was her. We never really found out what her exact tie was to that house. Why she only chose to come after the kids in, that lived there. But that woman decided then and there, I'm selling this place and I'm getting out. And if I can't sell it within two months, I'm going to let the bank take it and I'm leaving. She put it up for sale. Within two months, it hadn't sold. She decided her and her son were not taking any more. She let the bank have it and she left. So, and to this day, every now and then, I have a nightmare where I hear her voice calling me a bitch. I guess it just stuck with me. And I think until the day I die, I'm going to wonder about her. I'd love to know the story. I'd love to know what made her stay there. What made her... She had never even actually lived in the house the way I understand it. So what made her go to that house and what made her hate kids so badly if you happen to live in Aspen Hill Tennessee and you have any knowledge of this let me know all right guys that's my ghost story hope you enjoyed it and I hope I hope you don't have any unhappy ghost waiting to come out of your bedroom closet tonight. Bye, y'all.